great, incredible, very impressive group of people here who will tell you all about Uzbeks in America. And uh, perhaps Uzbeks outside of America too. Um, you know, we've two sessions in the morning, we, we basically discussed a lot of issues. And the question comes down to who will do all these things? Who plays the most you know, critical role in, in resolving all these issues, in, 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 in changing things? And we're basically talking about the Uzbek people. And right now, you have um, hundreds of uh, Uzbeks living in this country, in different parts of it. Um, <clears throat> this is definitely a remarkable event. As uh, it was mentioned earlier, this is the first time I have seen so many Uzbeks in one place. Uh, discussing their issues um, together. Um, you know, I've covered the community for many years and uh, we've never seen uh, such dis discussions at an academic institution, actually. So we have to thank Marlin and, uh, and Central Asia Program for organizing this. Um, the story of Uzbek immigrants is not very different than the story of other immigrants around the world. Um, they come here and continue to come here for various reasons, mainly for uh, in, uh, in search of a better life. Um, some are here because of their family connections and relations. Some are here as political refugees and asylees. Um, a lot of them are green uh, card lottery uh, winners. Um, and some are here illegally. Um, so, uh, and while some are here to study and train. So the, um, the, the community is very diverse. It is really hard to know when was the first time an Uzbek stepped onto American soil, but we know that there have been three major waves of, of immigration to the United States from Uzbekistan, from the former Soviet Union. So um, we're talking about what I call old Uzbeks who came here mainly in 1950s, 60s, 70s. These were the children of um, Uzbeks who fled the Bolshevik Revolution, the Stalin's uh, repression, and they came uh, by Afghanistan, Turkey, Europe, and um, the, the Arab countries. And then the second wave um, started in late 80s and went through early part of 90s. And among them were Bukharian Jews, who I'm sure many of you have heard about. It's a very integrated, solid group of immigrants who are mainly based in Queens. And then the third is uh, the, the, the third wave started when Uzbekistan became independent. So these are the representatives of independent Uzbekistan. Um, and you will um, hear a little bit about the different waves too from our speakers. But uh, we don't really know how many Uzbeks are here in the United States. There is no official number. But we can make some estimates. Uh, the, the community leaders tell us that we are at least 300,000. And, uh, and the main concentration, the largest community, is in New York, New Jersey area. But then you have thousands of Uzbeks in um, Chicago, uh, around Chicago. Adam uh, Sharipov and Akmar Jumabar are the representatives of that community. Uh, Dilshad Zakirov here will represent the New York, New Jersey Uzbek concentration. And then, um, Bilzot Muhammadiv is the chief editor of Vatan Dosh newspaper, which is the first Uzbek language newspaper outside of Uzbekistan. It's, a, it's basically what I call classic uh, immigrant newspaper. Um, and then Delorom has uh, one of the very successful NGOs that were founded outside of Uzbekistan. Um, Tashabus uh, was the idea of young lawyers, uh, mainly educated in the United States. Um, it has a very interesting mission, and they're very active online, so we'll hear more uh, from, from Delarum about this. Uh, there have been some interesting developments uh, lately involving the Uzbek community in the United States, mainly Brooklyn, uh, where three residents, Uzbeks, ethnic Uzbeks, were arrested in February, um, accused of trying to join ISIS. And uh, they all lived in the area where Vatandosh is based. So Vatandosh has been doing a lot of work lately with the, with the Brooklyn political leadership and uh, with, the, with the community in that area to, uh, to sort of explain the situation, to, to make people aware of this issue of uh, radicalism and extremism. And it's a huge story. So I'm hoping that we'll get to discuss that a little bit too. I want to. Um, 
also mention that I'm not wearing my broadcaster's hat here, so I'm not talking on, on behalf of the Voice of America. I'm, I'm just an Uzbek American um, in, this, in this round table. And uh, Bill Zott is also my colleague. He's, uh, he works with us at the Voice of America, and I know that he will also be sharing his insights as a, as a freelancer, uh, mainly as the chief editor of Batam Dosh. So uh, please think of some really interesting stimulating questions <laughs> while you, uh, you, you listen. Um, I want to start with uh, Delaro. Uh, the floor is yours. Um, tell us about the shuttles. about um, give information overall um, uh, what Tashabus does and how it start, started and uh, what are our mission and um, aim. Um, so talking about the background, um, it was founded uh, in 2004 um, uh, and um, it was started as a web blog first. Um, in, I graduated from law school in Uzbekistan in 2010, and I had an experience in um, working at legal clinic uh, back in Uzbekistan. Uh, I worked for three years, and um, it was a most exciting and um, good experience for me. So I thought, um, after I graduated from law school, um, I moved uh, to the United States um, and thought, uh, it would be better for me to continue my work at the legal clinic, and but this time online, um, because of the circumstances, uh, because of the family issues, I was here. Um, uh, so there, it, it was started as a web blog, but eventually we registered as an organization in 2012, um, and it's a nonprofit. Uh, it has a nonprofit status, um, and. Um, we work uh, mostly in um, online environment um, because of the geographical uh, distance, uh, and we find it quite um, uh, feasible uh, for us because it has positive sides and also some negative sides. But um, for our situation, we find it best uh, to work online. And um, uniqueness of our project is that we. Um, we uh, operate, we post uh, all the uh, work we do in Uzbek language. One of the main reasons um, uh, of creating, establishing our organization project was to target uh, uh, Uzbek speaking people uh, who are um, in rural areas. And we think as an organization, if a person uh, can speak Russian or another language, English or others, they have a better chance of um, having uh, access to information they need um, or can demand or defend their rights. And that's why uh, our target is mostly uh, Uzbek-speaking uh, people in Uzbekistan. Um, so I talked about the legal experience, uh, um, experience at the legal clinic, and uh, I'm not the only one who uh, started this organization. We have co-founders and colleagues, and uh, most of us had an experience at the legal clinic, and uh, that's where we got our inspiration to continue our work online. Um, so uh, all of us work on a volunteer, a volunteer base, and. Um, Many of us um, abroad, located in some other countries, and we do have also um, uh, freelancers who contribute with some legal article or um, legal materials inside Uzbekistan, law students or recent graduates. Um, so our mission is um, 
to encourage and empower citizens to actively participate in the process of strengthening the rule of law in Uzbekistan. Uh, as an organization, we uh, and personnel, I think that the um, legal system of Uzbekistan has necessary preconditions and safeguards for, the, uh, for building a democratic state with strong rule of law. But we see there is uh, two problems for that. Uh, and one is flagrant disregard of constitutional rights and laws by the government officials with impunity. And the second one is citizens' failure to take effective legal um, actions against such violations. And that has been indirectly contributing uh, to the growing disrespect of citizens' fundamental rights. Uh, so we see the problem there and we wanted to contribute our share um, because we have this knowledge expert um, experience so we can help people in our capacity so we um, in order to help um, we decided to offer pro bono legal advice to those in need um, and when I say legal advice I don't mean legal services it has a different um, um, it has different meanings in the you know, legal um, definition, legal terms in the US. We are all um, uh, lawyers, uh, law gradu graduates from Uzbekistan, and by the laws of Uzbekistan, we are, um, uh, we are licensed, uh, I mean, uh, to practice law, to give it ad uh, legal advice. And um, pro bono means uh, for free of charge. Um, and we provi provide information about the legal system and laws of Uzbekistan, especially in the context of fundamental rights and uh, duties. Um, and we publish um, articles and papers that educate citizens of Uzbekistan about their rights and effective means of defending them. So it's not only giving information which exists on the laws, but we do provide um, advice on how to defend them, how what strategy to take, or how to um, how to approach that uh, uh, defending procedure, and we publish commentaries on the laws of Uzbekistan with the purpose of identifying legal loopholes and encouraging discussion among scholars, practitioners, and law students. Um, so um, every time when there is a law, a new law adopts, uh, we take it and look. Um, uh, look into it and explain to the uh, lay people uh, in the lay terms uh, what implications for them it has and what they can benefit or what how they can see their future with that law. Uh, and we try to encourage discussion um, with other scholars, um, law practitioners, uh, and law students, which has been difficult for us in recent years. Um, and we conduct comparative studies on the laws and practice of Western <coughs> democracies with the aim of fun, um, finding solutions to the problems in the Uzbek legal system. So we do comparative studies um, analysis uh, because most of us who work, uh, who contribute to Tashabus have experience studying abroad. Uh, I personally had, uh, had a chance to study in uh, uh, in Japan, which is a developed country with a civil law system, uh, which is close um, to Uzbek legal system, and also had a chance to study in the U.S., which is a um, common law system, which is different. And uh, others also have the same experience. And um, the last thing we do is to assist law students and recent graduates to enhance their legal education and become socially responsible lawyers. So we uh, try to mentor them through uh, engaging them to our uh, project. Uh, we do mentoring uh, through the experience um, uh, with the help, uh, with the creating, um, producing answer answers to the legal questions and how to approach the law, how to find, how to, le how to uh, legal research and how to be responsible uh, lawyers. Uh, with that, I mean, we talk about um, ethics, lawyer ethics, which is mostly neglected in the legal education in Uzbekistan. Um, so uh, uh, now we are operating for, five, for almost five years. Um, and we had success stories, um, 
very we covered very wide range of topics and uh, we had many cases and um, we have a contact form on our website where people can write their uh, legal issue or question that they have to us and we try to uh, give them information, answer to their questions. And uh, because of that, we receive um, uh, hundreds of questions per month uh, since 2010 uh, when we started. And we have a big, very big, uh, collection of questions from the citizens, from, from Uzbek people all over the world, I would say. Um, and we had uh, some court cases. We do not do legal rep representation inside Uzbekistan, um, but we do have people who want to go to the court and defend, uh, take the legal procedure. And we had uh, one case where um, employees were forced to uh, we'll force it uh, to pick a cotton in cotton fields and on the way uh, to the cotton field they had an, a car accident where uh, employees um, were injured and through our help and advice we provided uh, those uh, employees were uh, able to get uh, damage money um, compensation uh, through the court and that was one of our success cases and we also had, um, that was a court case, and another um, one I can bring as an example is um, a school girls religious dress case where par uh, parents were um, uh, taught, uh, the school girls were not allowed to schools with a headscarf in Uzbekistan, and parents had a complaint Complained, and we uh, they had a question uh, first of all whether it was legal or illegal in Uzbekistan according to the laws of Uzbekistan, and if uh, yes or no, how they can fight <coughs> to their uh, children's rights. And we uh, we have given them information about uh, Uzbek laws uh, uh, and how what they say about this religious dress. Um, and uh, in the context of school girl, we have. Uh, given um, advice and strategy how to defend their rights and within a month or one and a half months we received a warm email saying that thank you because of the advice or information we have provided they were actually able to um, uh, stop um, harassment or um, it was not uh, official but uh, persecutions of from the directors of the school, and they were able to send their daughters to school with a headscarf. Um, and other cases I can say about child labor uh, case, it, uh, it was in 2013, we were publishing and working on um, elimination, uh, legal strategies or legal remedies on um, uh, fighting with uh, forced uh, labor and child labor, and we have provided information that it was um, what Uzbek law says about child labor and other stuff. And one case was reported that uh, a parent of a college, um, um, like a vocational school um, student, uh, was able to stop. Uh, his son from being mobilized to the cotton fields because he had the uh, information we have provided and after his action, the whole class, um, parents of the whole class were able to stop their uh, children uh, from being sent to the cotton fields. And in 2014, we have uh, produced a manual on legal remedies against forced labor in cotton fields. It was the most substantial and important work we have done so far. Um, it was published in Uzbek and in Russian language. Um, so the topics we cover are, um, I would divide them into two, three parts, national issues, international issues, and some, um, some, uh, some work in the US, uh, regarding the US legal system. And when I say national, um, I would include, we have covered a very wide range of topics and issues, and these are just one example. Uh, we have worked on religious freedom um, very extensively, um, and we have done work on torture, complaints to the police and the national security services. And we, the biggest number of questions we get is related to family law, uh, and we have done 
uh, work on forced labor and freedom of assembly and every single case, every single answer or uh, article we publish has a background which is a legal, uh, real story. They have real story stories. Um, we rely on, we base on, and through them, and based on the legal system of laws of Uzbekistan, we try to bring answer and comment on them. And uh, through the um, international documents which Uzbekistan signed, we also bring give international pers uh, pros uh, perspective that how this issue would have been solved if that hap if that happened, and so on. Um, international, when I say international, we do, um, we have, uh, we had questions uh, from people uh, who are Uzbek cit uh, citizens but living abroad who were victims of human trafficking or um, citizens living abroad but had issues with uh, visa and permanent residency issues. They didn't have access to information because of the lack of information regarding these issues. And citizen rights, uh, when I say this, there was a famous case. We have um, public commented uh, law and published articles about Uzbek citizens being sentenced to death in, in, in Indonesia, <laughs> Malaysia, Malaysia. Or Indonesia for drug smuggling and how their citizens' rights of uh, be having um, defense from their country were ignored. <coughs> and about the um, U.S. legal system, we started uh, since 2012 about uh, writing or giving, providing some information about the U.S. legal system and how it operates and how the constitutional rights are given to the everyone on the soil of the U.S. to the Uzbek immigrants in the U.S. So uh, one, of the, one of the features we get access to those people, we write in Uzbek language and we know that there are uh, so many um, big number of Uzbek immigrants who do not speak English um, or Russian. Uh, so we have uh, written on constitutional rights such as um, uh, which can uh, which can work for their benefit and how uh, what their rights and what their obligations what they are expected to know and wh what they have to do when federal agencies or uh, from the police approach to them because we thought these are important for the immigrant communities to know and um, we are planning to continue our work uh, with the same mission, uh, with the national issues, and with also, uh, we have since the um, uh, incidents uh, which took place in New York, uh, we are more committed to work um, with the Uzbek immigrant community in the U.S. as well. Um, thank you so much. <laughs>